Hi, I'm Tangia, and I'm going to be answering the four questions. Uh, number one is, in what ways does your media product use, develop, or challenge forms and conventions on real media products? Okay, so for my film, The Black Rose, um, I've actually sort of taken the narrative from, um, it's actually inspired by The Ugly Duckling, you know, the fairy tale we've all, not the fairy tale, the story that we've all heard from our childhood, um, and sort of given it a modern twist. So I've sort of taken that convention and sort of given it my original twist to it to um, adapt to the audience um, feedback and what they um, get attracted to. So the ways in which I've challenged conventions is by placing the setting in an urban area in East London where the girls portray the bullies that um, the bullies bully the final um, the main character Rosie um, so they use their language that's inspired by the urban areas of London so they use slang and also the surroundings as well the setting um, when I filmed it I used a medium shot as well as a long shot to set the scene so you can see that it's, you know, in a school, in a secondary school, and it's in London because of their accents, it's slang. Um, so, yeah, that sort of sets the scene for the audience and it tells them where the um, story is set um, instead of, like, um, yeah, it being in a different time and place. Um, what have I done that's unusual? What I've done is I've actually got um, Rosie, the protagonist herself, um, to narrate over the entire film because usually in most films what I see is that where the audience are placed in an omniscient um, sort of perspective where we get to see all things you know like see over a bird's eye view of the film but here I've sort of opened up Rosie's character to the audience I've made her narrate in a way where we're placed in her position she's sort of talking to us we're like her diary so um, she confides in us and she tells us why it's happening and it really makes the audience sort of empathise with her. So that's another con um, sort of original convention I made for my film. Um, I haven't actually seen that in um, most films that are sort of targeted at my target audience, which are teenagers. Um, yeah, so I've given that my twist. Um, also, the structure of the film, it's quite abstract. Um, a new film that came out, Spring Breakers, um, it's for 18, I think, and the f way it's filmed, the, it's set up, is quite abstract. So we get into the character's, uh, like, position, but it's because there's, like, drug use in the film. We're sort of, you know, in that sort of ecstasy, hypnotised world where, like, you know, the characters um, sort of do all of that. But in my um, film, because we're in her head, she's sort of memorising, mem uh, reminiscing her past and when she does get bullied and it's quite abstract the scenes are abstract the way they're placed because it's at the um in first it, it's going chronological but there are scenes where we see the bullies and we know um it's in her head because of the um effect i've placed in it and also the characters the ways um i've actually stuck to the conventional bully type characters and then you've got the geek and then you've got, you know, the victim. I've actually sort of, I was inspired by Mean Girls. Um, my target audience, teenagers, especially girls, they're very familiar with um, the film Mean Girls. So um, in there you get to see like the stereotypical um, conventional bullies, you know, the plastics. And then that you've got the geek who wears the glasses and she drops her books. I've also got that in my film. So um, um, the, ca the audiences are able to sort of, familiarise with these characters and you know when they're familiar they're, they feel safe because they're used to what they've seen before in other films so yeah you've got I've got Poppy the girl that sort of um, helps the victim um, confront the bullies and she's got the glasses she's got the posh accent she's got the books I've also got the victim who's very sad very slow very emotional and also the bullies that like to stay in their clique and they're very rough they're very um sort of, you know, dominating every scene that they're in. Um, what else? The genre of my film, I've actually um, sort of twisted the genre from drama to fantasy. Um, the dramatic elements in my film is the relationships that we see in the film. So we've got um, Rose's relationship with the bullies, Rose's relationship with her family. We see her brother coming, to, um, sort of coming into her room. And then her relationship with Poppy, the geek sort of friend that she has. Um, 
I've stayed true to the relationships that are portrayed. I haven't really broken any conventions um, because I just really wanted to portray um, like a story that's sort of familiar to the audience. But at the same time, I've twisted the genre and added some fantasy elements to it. Um, the fantasy element in the film is sort of depicted when she transforms. Um, I've sort of added like the heartbeat and then um, the blackout when she is transforming. And then um, the story comes back to her transformed all beautiful again. So that's like the um, fantasy element to it. So yeah, I've sort of, I've given it a hybrid genre for my film. I've got the dramatic elements, the drama genre, as well as the fantasy genre when she does um, transform. Um, the ways in which I used my camera, I've actually had quite difficulties and I've um, progressed in my way to the way I've used my camera. At first I held the um, huge camera to sort of follow her, um, just to show that the audience is with her always. But then when I sort of um, evaluated the scenes that I watched back and I um, sort of um, seen that the scenes weren't really sort of um, quite, you know, accurate because they were quite jilted and they were shaky so I had to use the tripod and I'd had to refilm the scenes again which involved more planning and getting the actors to come out again so yeah after I did that it was more um, sort of stable um, and I've also used shots um, that sort of di um, come diagonally from the sky you'll see in the uh, middle of the um, story where this, um, the camera is looking up at the sky and it falls down on her and then it goes back to the sky again. Um, I've a I actually created that myself. I'm not sure if any other film have used it. I haven't seen any which I've watched and um, evaluated. But yeah, I've sort of done that to give it a more abstract feel. Um, the way I've used sound, um, my film actually heavily relies on um, sort of the instrumental, the slow instrumental in the beginning that sort of adds to the genre, the generic conventions of drama. So it's like, because she's sad in the scenes, there's like a slow, sad instrumental. But then we see um, gradually um, the music changes as well. So after her transformation, the music becomes more positive. It gives a more positive tone in the film. And right at the end, when she confronts her um, bullies, the music again changes to a more encouraging sort of vibe and that sort of um, dictates the audience how to feel and also it portrays the um, sort of progression in the film so from really sad dull music to really happy music um, so yeah I've done that and yeah I think that's about it for question one which is in what ways have your media products used developed or challenged forms and conventions of real media products okay thank you